10 minutes with a billionaire, five minutes because I broke my leg earlier that day, but still went out and got the shot and the pain meds were wearing off, two minutes because the tide was coming in, one second because the moment only happened for one second, 20 seconds because the police came in and busted up this scene as I was photographing heroin addicts on the streets of Cambodia, and a few minutes to work this entire scene for commercial photography shoot because video is a priority and we only had limited time. You get the picture. Today we're talking about working fast. I mean, I talk fast, so I figured I might as well talk about how I often have to work fast. No matter whether you're an amateur or a pro and what genre of photography you're in, at some point in your career, at some point in your photography, you're gonna have to work fast. And today I'm gonna teach you how to work fast and do so effectively. So let's get into it and let's talk photography. All right, first off, as always, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com. I've got a whopping sale right now, only two slots left for the upcoming month for my monthly mentorship package. This is my intense, my ultimate package for anyone out there pro or amateur, any level, any genre, anyone that truly really wants to put in the work and dive in and improve their photography skills. And I do this by helping you find a project, walk you through every step of the way. This comes with four one hour Zoom sessions spaced out weekly. It also comes with, during that month, you get unlimited access to me via WhatsApp. This did cost $1,500. I've put it on sale right now for only $999. Again, two slots left. I've also got other classes on my website. I've got presets and I've got prints that make great gifts as the holidays approach. Check all that out at justinmott.com. All right, so working fast is a skill that I get complimented on the most in my photography. This is what clients give me feedback on. Of course you want people to say like, we love your photos and yes, that happens too. And that's how I've made a career out of photography. But one of the things that I've sort of taken pride in is my ability to work fast, not just fast, but fast, efficiently, and effectively. I've had clients tell me that, I've had my team tell me that, who have been forced to work with other photographers, like, wow, you can work so fast. And I've had other photographers who have seen me work, they're like, oh my goodness, you really can work fast. It comes from my time working as a photojournalist, but I've carried that over into my time working in wedding photography, and then also in my commercial photography business as well which often you should slow down and often I want to slow down, but unfortunately the world at times will make you speed up in your photography. It's just part of the gig. It's something we have to accept. So today we're gonna dive in. I'm gonna talk about how I do so. I'm gonna use the example of my commercial photography, Mott Visuals, but really this applies to all different genres of photography, the things I'm gonna teach you guys about today. And hopefully you come away with some tips that on your next shoot, when you have to work fast, you're not just complaining, you're not just making excuses, you're actually executing you're working fast, you're producing, and in the end, you and your clients are happy as well. So this is not ideal. A lot of you are probably saying like, what do you mean, Justin? You're always preaching to slow down in your photography. Yes, in my personal work, I want to slow down. I want to take a breath. I want to see the whole scene around me. But unfortunately, even in my personal work, things come up. Other photographers might be there, or a situation happens really fast. You've got to be able to work and shoot fast. So let's dive into it. Let me give you guys some tips today that'll help you next time you're put in that position. Okay, so here it is. Here's my advice on how to work fast and efficiently and effectively. So let's start with the first one. This is one that makes most of my lists or most of my advice episodes. It's just to prepare, prepare, understand your gear. First of all, technically understand the lighting, understand your gear, but more than that, Prepare in your mind on how you think this shot is gonna unfold. So again, often in my commercial photography, we are shooting video first. It's just the way things are going. Clients care more about video, more budget goes into video, it takes more time to shoot video, and so that's where their priorities are. So I often have to double up while someone else is shooting video, or I'm just left with like a little bit of time to get my still shot. Luckily for me, my business does both, so I'm benefiting from the video as well. It's a little bit of a harder pill to swallow when there's a video team shooting and you're not making any money off of it and your livelihood depends on your photography and you've got to double up. However, you still have to produce. So 
prepare. Do so by, again, I often, if I'm working in a fast situation, I might have two different lenses on me. So when my time comes up to shoot, I can try a couple different things with my 85 and also my 35 without wasting time on swapping lenses. I've also got my exposure set. I've also probably taken some sample shots while the cinematographer is filming to get an idea of what's going to work for me. I also have the shot in my head and I've worked the scene on scouting day. And on that note, you should build in and bill in a scouting day for every single commercial shoot that you do. So all all of this preparation just helps give me more time to get my shots. So if, they, if I've only got like 10 minutes to work a scene, every single moment that I'm wasting doing, every single moment I'm wasting swapping lenses or wasting because I wasn't prepared with my equipment, batteries charged, camera on, exposure set, lighting how I want it, being in the right position to get the composition I want. Every moment I'm worried about that is time where I can't be creative. So I try to give myself a balance of like, I'm prepared, get all my shots, and then even a little bit of time for something that might pop into my mind while I'm shooting. That's just the way my brain works and it's the way that I work best, sort of on the fly, but I work better on the fly and I have more time on the fly when I'm more prepared. Hope that makes sense. The next piece of advice I would say is to double up. So let's say in my situation, like I said, in this industry, but it's not just commercial photography that this is happening as well. I've done this on assignment photography too, and often even in personal work. If there's like a big thing happening, maybe they're doing surgery on the rhinos, or I was just shooting for WWF and we were photographing different scenes at the same time, things happening naturally, but there's a cinematographer there, and I'm taking pictures, double up, you know, shoot as much as you can. Don't play that game of like, oh, I'm gonna wait for you to finish. Of course, if they're taking audio or that's a priority and you're in their shot, I'll talk about how to deal with that later on, but double up as much as you can. Even if you're not getting like your usable shots when you're doubling up, still do it because it'll give you ideas. You'll have time to review it. So then when it comes your time, if there is a lot of time for yourself, then you've, okay, you've, you've taken those shots that don't work, you figure out what works, and then you make the necessary adjustments that work for the images that you wanna capture. The next important piece of advice is focus on teamwork and trust. I work with assistants that I trust to have my gear ready so that I'm prepared. I work with producers that know to look out for the little things that are important to me, the model's position, their posture, little details in the backgrounds. So the prop team, the styling team, the wardrobe team, and the producer, they're all looking for these things. So if I've only got a few minutes to get my shot, they can pay attention to that stuff and I can focus on being creative. So they might be shooting, everything works well, but the, one of the kids is making a funny face or his body language isn't great and it's a hotel resort shoot and they're supposed to be doing something happy. I might not notice that if I've only got a few minutes, that one out of the two kids out of the four people doesn't have the right expression. So I've got someone that knows what I'm looking for, to knows to call it out, knows when to call it out to me, can fix it and get the shot. The same goes for the models. I communicate with them ahead of time, what I'm looking for, how I like to work. And it's not a one-way street. I talk, talk to them as well so that we can work well together. I like to know how they work and I like them to understand how I work so that we can work well when the time comes. Hey guys, just a quick moment to remind you guys to like and subscribe and if you really like like me take a moment to join our community it costs only four dollars and 99 cents a month and it does help the channel it does help me produce content like this for you guys but also it's not a one-way street i also give you guys exclusive content bonus content early release whole bunch of other perks again four dollars and 99 cents a month not so bad just like a cup of coffee anyway back to the episode the next piece of advice which sort of ties into the last piece of advice is to communicate communicate with Everyone, communication is so important ahead of time so that again, when you're shooting, you're not worried about all these things. So communicate with your team, make sure they understand what you want, what you're after, how you like to work. Also communication with your client is paramount to the success of the shoot. If I'm in a situation like these hotel shoots where I'm doubling up or where video's a priority and photography's secondary, my limited time to take pictures, I can't have them like in my ear with all random advice or things that aren't pertinent to what I'm doing right now. Of course, if there's really something messed up and they need to point it out, that's important that you have opened up that level of communication so that they can tell you. However, it's important to communicate ahead of time. So a good example of this would be when we're on a hotel shoot, maybe we've got a whole scene in the master bedroom or in the lobby. All the models have been styled, the wardrobe's on, what bags are gonna use, what shoes they're wearing, and all the background bookshelves are styled, right? Have the client sign off in it then, right? And then so when you're shooting your images, it's all been approved. Of course, the angle might change a little bit, but there's a level of trust that has to happen. That comes with communication because communication with the entire team is probably the most important part of this. Communication will help you work faster and more efficiently. The next piece of advice is to slow down. What? I just blew your mind. You're just talking fast. You're talking about working fast. And now you're saying to slow down. What are you talking about? 
Justin. Okay, what I mean is know when to slow down, know when to pause, know when to take a moment to reset or fight for an extra moment. So let's say, for example, the cinematographer got their shots, that scene is breaking down, the light's still pretty good, you got a shot and you're all packed up and you're starting to move to the next shot and then you're looking at your photos and you're like, ah, oh, maybe, maybe you didn't get that shot perfectly, maybe you missed something, maybe your team missed something in the styling. Or maybe you saw another shot, maybe right over there, the light's hitting that wall and there's a beautiful shot you can take of the model right there, but there's not a lot of time you're gonna rush the next shot. But you've listened to the client, you've communicated with the client, you're prepared. So fight for that moment, fight for a second to slow down and say, hey, can I have a moment? And then obviously be fair, communicate with your producer who's running the schedule to say, okay, I'll make it up on the next shot. I'll work that shot a little bit faster. I don't mean to slow down in general because this episode is about working fast, but know when to slow down or know when to fight to slow down. I hope that makes sense. But in order to do that, you've also got to say it with conviction. You've got to believe in it. If you're going to fight with the director about, not fight, that's not the right word, but if you're going to like convince the client or convince the director or convince the producers driving the schedule for more time, you need to be, you need to trust yourself and you need to say it with conviction so that they believe in it and that they trust you and then you need to execute as well. The next piece of advice is to take every minute that you're given, not just because of the optics of it. Yeah, I mean, if you only have a small, if you only have a short period of time and you've been complaining about it and all the pre-production meetings about, hey, I need more time as a photographer and then you get a chance to like shoot something and they're giving you 10 minutes but you take five minutes and don't shoot more, it's not great optics. But in addition to that, you just never know what you're gonna find. Don't give up, never think that you've like got the shot. I've get most of my elevated shots, most of my hero shots, most of the shots that the client is really impressed with. When I come up with something on the fly, meaning I've got the shot that I wanted, I've, however, there was a few more minutes and rather than just pack up and take a break or have a coffee or check my phone, I look around I'm like, okay, what else? What else can I get here? Clients appreciate it just because of the hard work, but they'll appreciate it later on because you most likely will get a better picture. You're most likely get a shot that you weren't thinking of originally, and that's often where that creativity is born, right there in the moment on the spot, because you've allowed yourself a breath, you've allowed yourself a minute to think and look around and capture a shot. The last piece of advice, and something that makes it into all my advice videos, and my sort of attempts to be inspirational to you guys videos, but I believe in it, so I'm gonna say it, is no excuses. Don't be an excuse person. Don't be moping around, you didn't have enough time, or that shot would have been great if you would have let me shoot in that good light. Don't be an excuse person, figure it out. Figure out a way to get the best shot. Of course, like I said, no one to fight for that light, no one to fight for more time, no one to fight for that extra moment, but just don't be an excuse person at the end of the day. People don't wanna hear that. That is planting a seed in the client's head to not like your images. So be upbeat and be positive about your images and how the shoot went for that day and say it with conviction. When you're having dinner with a client, how'd it go today? Oh, it could've been better, but the weather, no, own it. Be like, oh, it went great, it went fantastic. I'm happy with what I got today, all things considered. Sure, if it rained all day and you got absolute garbage, you can say, yeah, it rained, but I still was able to pull out some shots. Don't be completely negative, I guess is what I'm saying. And don't dwell on those excuses, don't dwell on the negative, just use your energy to produce, use your energy for positivity. And also as the photographer, you're often the lead on the shoot, you're gonna set the mood for the entire team. It often works that way. Or if your mood is down and in the dumps all day, other people will be that way too. And it just creates a bad overall vibe for the entire shoot. So. Don't have excuses, keep a positive attitude, and be a problem solver, and produce. That's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am pretty awesome recently at answering all your questions, so if you have a question, don't be shy in the comments section. I love engaging with you guys. That's why I do this channel. I like having a dialogue about photography, so ask me in the comments section. Again, guys, don't forget to check out my online store. I've got one-on-one -on -one classes. I've got that great sale right now on my monthly mentorship program. I've got presets that will not make you a better photographer, but they will add some pop to your images. I've also got prints that make great gifts, great wall art for yourself. Again, you can check all that out at justinmott.com. Also, if you like, like me, consider joining the channel. It does help me produce more content like this. It's $4.99 a month, and you also get a whole bunch of bonus perks. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.